Dear students, now we are going to discuss load line and operating point of the transistor in detail. Let's start with DC load line. Here load represents the output side of the transistor circuit. Hence we can say that the load line is the straight line drawn on the output characteristics of the transistor. Okay, so here we can consider CE transistor circuit in this the output parameters are collector current, collector emitter voltage. So we are going to draw the DC load line on this output characteristics of the CE transistor circuit. Here we need to have two points, correct? Two coordinates to make a DC load line. So why do we call this as a DC load line means here we are going to draw the line without AC input it has only DC voltage. So here it gives the values of output parameters IC and VCE with respect to zero signal. That means without input signal. Here we can consider VCC and RC both are fixed one. Okay. That means the supply voltage and the collector resistance both are fixed. So here we are going to find out the coordinate points. So first we can consider if VCE is equal to 0 then the collector current becomes VCC by RC. So these two are the known values. From this we can get here the collector current is equal to what? VCC by RC. Correct? So that is the value here. So similarly we can get the A coordinates value by making this IC value as 0. So whenever IC is equal to 0 here this VCE becomes simply the supply voltage PCC. So these two are the coordinates of this DC load line. So why do we need this DC load line? Major applications of load line concept is to find out the proper operating point to get the maximum output from the transistor circuit. It is also used to analyze the variation of the output parameters without AC input signal. Here important point is when the signal is applied, that means AC input signal is applied, the variations take place symmetrically about the operating point. So we will discuss this operating point later on this video lecture, okay? There are two types of load lines available, DC load line, AC load line. DC load line is the line drawn only for DC biasing without any AC input signal. AC load line is the line drawn when an AC input signal is applied along with the DC voltages. So this is the major difference between AC and DC load lines. In this DC, there is no AC input signal given to the circuit. For this AC load line, AC input signal is applied along with the DC voltage. Okay. So next, AC load line and DC load line. From this diagram, we come to know that that AC load line is steeper than this DC load line. This is due to the loading effect and capacitor effect because of that AC input signal. Okay. So at the output side we have to consider the loading and capacitive effect whenever the AC input signal is given. So hence we can get the steeper slope for this AC load line. So in this one. This AC load line is mainly used to represent the maximum swing of the output signal. So we can analyze the maximum possible swing of that output signal for the given AC input signal. Okay. So that's what given here. It is steeper than DC load line due to loading and capacitor effect. This DC load line is mainly used to analyze the variation of output parameters without any AC input signal. This AC load line is mainly used to represent the maximum possible output swing for the given AC input signal. So next coordinates here the DC load line can be drawn between these two points. So here B coordinates VC is equal to 0 at that time IC is equal to VCC by RC. So here VC is equal to VCC when IC is equal to 0 that is the point A here. Here the coordinates are the maximum values of the output signals because it represents the maximum possible output swing. Next we are going to discuss operating point or Q point. This operating point is the specific point on the output characteristics of the transistor 
where we can get the maximum output okay without any distortion so that point is known as operating point or quiescent point or bias point so this point is located at the midpoint of the dc load line to get the maximum output so it should always be stable to get the stable output so why do we need this q point located at the midpoint here if you are having this q point at this midpoint of this dc load line for the given input ac signal we can get the stable ac output signal like this so this is what the maximum value okay so here you can see this if the q point is located at the midpoint of the dc load line or ac load line we can get the maximum output so we can get the output like this so this is the maximum value if we are going to get this q point somewhere else apart from this midpoint what will happen so here there may be some distortion in the output cycle so we have to ensure that the skew point is always located at the midpoint of the load line in order to get the distortion free and faithful amplification we have to also ensure that the skew point must also be located within the active region in practical case there are some factors affecting the location of the skew point here the q point tends to shift its position due to the transistor current gain beta reverse saturation current icvo or this can also be represented as leakage current okay so next base emitter voltage that is input voltage so these three parameters are temperature dependent if the temperature is going to increase here this current gain and leakage current both are getting increased here the input voltage is decreased so these three parameters affect the location of the q point so this causes instability of the q point so here it is called as thermal instability in order to avoid thermal instability the stabilization techniques are used we will discuss this stabilization techniques in the next lecture video okay